On this episode of The Driver Mechanic, we're going to take these components one by one, shove them in the truck, and see if the wheels will spin. So what do we have here? Basically when doing an EV conversion these days, you're most likely are going to be using an AC motor, an alternating current motor. That's why we start with the box on the very end there. The silver box is called an inverter. It performs multiple tasks, but its main role, its main job is to take direct current out of the battery pack and convert it into alternating current so that your alternating current motor, AC motor, can function. Now, whether you're watching this video because you're interested in specifically doing an EV swap or EV conversion using a Lexus GS450H transmission, transmotor as I call it, because it has two electric motors inside it, or you may be watching this video just to get a general idea on how to do an EV conversion. There are some similar similarities when it comes to the setup. Okay? All AC motors will need an inverter. So whether you're using a Lexus transmission with an inverter such as this one, or you're using a Nissan LEAF, it still has an inverter. Now the Nissan LEAF has what I call an integrated inverter. Okay, The, the Nissan LEAF has something uh, what I call a pancake stack. There's a motor on top of that, there's another stack which is an inverter, and on top of that I believe is the uh, uh, charger and so on. So each manufacturer does something unique and, and it's uh, really genius and there's pros and cons to each implementation. The Lexus has what I call a remote inverter where you use a long cable to connect the inverter to the motor, if you will. The LEAF doesn't do that. It doesn't use orange cables to connect the inverter to the motor. It uses something called bus bars. And what are bus bars? They're essentially just metal strips, strips of metal. They're wide and flat. Um, they're mostly made out of copper because copper is a good conductor of electricity. So even a Tesla, if you see the uh, rear wheel drive Tesla units, if you will, whether it's the large unit, the big unit, whatever they call it, or the small unit, you see these two cylinders. It looks like a barrel, a metal chrome looking or silver looking barrel. All of that is not the motor, okay, or it's not even two motors, like one on this side and one on this side. One side of that barrel is, is the motor. And the other side is actually an inverter. So they're also integrated. They're not stacked like pancakes in a Nissan LEAF, but they're integrated because they're not connected with any orange cable. I believe they're still connected with bus bars. So that's another example of an integrated motor and inverter. Then you have the Toyota Prius. Now the Toyota Prius also uses a what I call a, a remote inverter setup, but uh, Toyota and Lexus are essentially the same company um, and they're using a similar design. On the Prius, uh, instead of being a rear wheel drive vehicle like the Lexus, uh, it is a front wheel drive. However, the transaxle, the motor, if you will, uses orange cables for high voltage to connect to a remote uh, inverter, a Prius inverter. So in all those cases, whether it's our Lexus, whether it's a Prius, whether it's a Leaf, or whether it's a Tesla Model S or Model 3, what have you, there's an AC motor, you will find an inverter that goes with it. So when making our connection, we're going to do it in two passes, okay? Because there are the high voltage connections and the low voltage. Easiest way to identify the high voltage is because they're orange. We're using color coding and orange usually signifies high voltage. Low voltage would be around 12 volts or what we call 12 volts. So at our first pass, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the inverter to the transmission 
using big fat orange cables. And then instead of using a battery pack in this uh, test setup, we're going to use what is called a bench power supply. And that's what this white unit is here. What I did is I wrapped these leads. One is typical red for DC positive, one is black for DC negative. I wrapped them in orange conduit just to symbolize high voltage. There's a reason why we're using this instead of the actual battery pack. Yes, we will eventually test with an actual battery pack and of course we will drive the track, truck with a battery pack. But for testing, these types of uh, power supplies are ideal. And <clears throat> something that is very important in electric vehicle conversion is a pre-charged circuit, okay? I think it's probably the most critical component or system in an electric vehicle because it protects components. It protects them from damage. It's not only a safety device because it's not really there to protect you, although it does that too, but it's to protect the capacitor or capacitors inside an inverter. We can't take a high voltage battery, say 200 volts, 250, 300, 360 volts like in our case, and directly connect it to an inverter. If we were to do that, the capacitor or capacitors inside the inverter would blow up. So eventually, in order to implement this correctly, we'll have to install something called a pre-charged circuit. It's a bit of an advanced topic and we can test without it if we use a low voltage and low amperage power supply such as this one. This one will only provide 30 volts and 10 amps to our inverter to spin the motor. And hopefully that's enough to spin it with the drive shaft and spin it with the wheels on the truck. The truck of course will be lifted off the ground for safety. But yeah, I put on these orange conduit or corrugated wrap to symbolize high voltage. So this will only be 30 volts in our case, but we're pretending that this is 360 volts. And this power supply replaces a high voltage battery in our test scenario, okay? This will be part of the high voltage connections. So we will connect the power supply to the inverter and the inverter to the transmission using orange cables, if you will. And that's it. That's it for the high voltage connections. We are not doing anything with the battery charger in this phase and during this test. We're also not going to be installing a DC to DC converter, which is essentially acting as an alternator. We're not doing that for this simple short test. Okay, we're keeping things very simple. Once we have our high voltage connected, which we'll do first, just as a demonstration. Of course, you would do your high voltage last and you would connect the battery pack at the very, very end. But just to keep things simple and not clutter it with way more wiring that's low voltage, I'm gonna walk you through connecting all the high voltage stuff. We're not gonna turn it on and plug it in to keep it safe, but we'll make all those connections. And then we'll come back and we'll do the low voltage. So let's talk about the low voltage connections. We do have quite a few components here but we can easily identify that this is just a regular car battery. And this is a key component. Even in an electric vehicle, we still use a regular 12 volt car battery. It powers the inverter, it powers the controller, powers the throttle pedal, and it powers the neutral safety switch on our transmission. The biggest challenge that we have when doing an EV conversion and borrowing components from an electric vehicle is how do we make them work outside of that vehicle? And in, this, in our case right now, we've taken an inverter and a transmission from a Lexus, okay, from a Lex GS450H. And we basically cut the head off of it. 
So how do we control the vehicle? For that, we need a open source or a third party controller. And that's what this is. This is a controller that was designed by Damien McGuire with a number of other folks from Open Inverter. And this allows us to control the inverter, to send control commands. Input from the throttle goes to the controller, gets translated and sent to the inverter. So in the Lexus, because it was a hybrid vehicle, it essentially had two brains. It had an ECM, Now, I may be getting these letters wrong, these acronyms wrong, but I know that there was an engine control module or a PCM power control module, something along those lines. And there, all, there was also another black box that was called the hybrid vehicle control module. And so we don't have that here. We can't just pull that off of a Lexus and make it work outside of the car. Things are so deeply integrated and so rooted inside of those electric vehicles such as the LEAF or the Lexus that it will be nearly impossible to make it work using the OEM components. So we take what we can use and then we have to turn to a third party solution, something that is open source perhaps, and this will control the inverter outside of the actual Lexus very important component. So that's what this is. We will connect the controller using this uh, four pairs of uh, twisted pair wires all the way to the inverter. It's probably the one of the most important connections that we're making. The other important connection is connecting the inverter to the transmission or the transmission's resolvers. Now resolvers, I've spoken about them in a prior video, are essentially sensors. They're sensors that sense the position of the motor as it spins to tell us where it is during its rotation, and among other things, and measure uh, RPM and so on. So basically, the inverter connects using one of these uh, resolver cables to the uh, motors inside of the transmission. Our transmission happens to have two motors in it, therefore has two resolvers, so it uses two of these cables. To keep our, our test simple, we are not going to connect to MG1. We are only going to connect MG2. So we're not going to use this cable. I believe I numbered these and uh, we are only going to use MG2. We're only going to use MG2. MG2, in addition to having the connections for the resolver, comes with extra red and blue wires, and these supply power, okay? These will supply power actually to the inverter from our battery. So this alligator clip will simply clip onto the battery and via this connector supply positive uh, 12 volts to our inverter and on the inverter plug there is actually a white set of white and black wires that are the negative side that will connect to the negative side of the battery. Something that is really important on an electric vehicle is that we do not mix the two grounds. We cannot share a common ground for the high voltage and the low voltage. The high voltage negative or ground is essentially uh, encapsulated and it's completely isolated from the vehicle chassis, from the rest of the components, okay? It runs directly to the battery pack and it terminates inside of the battery pack, okay? So we have to keep the two uh, grounds completely separate. 